Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue in sunny Orlando, Florida. Tough job, but somebody has to do it. And what I'm doing is covering the annual PGA Merchandise Show. Every year, they come to Orlando, Florida from around the globe as companies and individuals display what's new in product lines and equipment and apparel in the world of golf. So stay with us over the next half hour and take a look what's new at the PGA Merchandise Show this year in Orlando. It's coming up next on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by PGN Plus. Play your golf bucket list by Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life and Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNplus.com, the professional golfer's network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to PGNplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on PGNplus.com. Book your tee time today. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Well, you know, we always look to see what's new in the apparel line. And let's start off right here at the Loudmouth exhibit. This is Woody, who actually began it all, right? I Woody, how many years all, yeah. ago? 15 years ago. 15 and still going strong and bright. Yep, bigger than ever, <laughs> brighter than ever, bolder than ever, yeah. How did it get started? Uh, you know, I was just, uh, you remember how guys used to dress back in the late 60s and late 70s? You know, Jackie Gleason and Bob Hope and Jack Lemmon and uh, even Johnny Miller always wore these, uh, you know, psychedelic clothes. We're talking about early 70s, right? So, so you took it to another level or two. I, I did. I uh, I would say it's uh, on steroids. Yeah, golf, golf pants, obnoxious golf pants on steroids. Okay, it began with pants, I think, and then each year the product line kind of expanded. Look at this out. You got the whole thing going here. Yeah, yeah, we got... Uh, Where would you wear this, bottoms. for instance? I mean, with the jacket. I can see the shirt and the pants out on the golf course, but how about the jacket? Well, last night, we went out uh, to eat and uh, bar hopping, and because of the way we were dressed, there was this whole throng following us to each bar. We'd leave one bar, go to another one, and then they'd all come because it's just fun. I mean, it's an attraction. That's now, what it is. It's an attraction. It certainly is. And you also have, I think I've seen some people here, like a husband or male-female matching outfits, right? Yes, uh, we did not make women's clothing at first, but uh, we got so much pressure, emails, that, uh, hey, how come my husband can like, look good and not me? So we uh, eventually made women's wear as, as well. And, and your spokesman, or I guess model in this case, on the tour has been, since the beginning, John Daly is still around, right? Yes, uh, John Daly uh, was with us for, has been with us for about six or seven years. Uh, great guy, loves the clothes, wears it well, and a great golfer. Tell me that story that you t or tell our viewers the story when he sees something new that you're wearing, he yeah. wants his too. Yeah, every once in a while, we, we would do some prototypes first. I'd try them on at the office, and uh, our media department would snap a picture and put it up on Facebook. And if he sees it and he doesn't have it, I get a phone call right away. <laughs> what is your, do you have a Target demo? No, you know what? Uh, people have been walking by here all day, and kids from five years old are looking at it, loving it. And of course, the older guys say, hey, I used to have stuff like that in my closet. I need to get some more. So everyone likes it. How about the international market? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have shipping depots in the UK for Europe in the UK. Uh, Japan, we have distributors in Japan, Australia, Canada. It's worldwide. Woody? It's still going strong and loud as ever. 
Now, Loudmouth has expanded, as we mentioned, beyond just wild pants. And Cassie Kavakovich, who is in brand marketing with Loudmouth, is here to kind of show us some other things, everything from sunglasses to socks. What else you got in Loudmouth? So we have a new line of performance headwear called Head Sweats. And this is a new collection for us. We have visors and caps, and they're breathable and comfortable. And uh, the golfers really love to wear them. We also have- Oh yeah, what's this on your arm? These are called sleeves, and they're arm compression bands. And they keep the golfer either cool or warm. And it also provides sun protection. And so golfers really enjoy wearing these when they're, when they're wearing a polo shirt, so they can keep their arms protected. Did I see two some iPad uh, cases? We do. We have a line of iPad cases, cell phone cases, tablet cases. Uh, we want to keep the accessories uh, looking good. Wow. And it's all come from just a pair of wild pants to this now, right? I know, I know. Wild pants to uh, glassware, accessories, uh, socks. Um, you know, our patterns are so well known that people really want to see it, not just on clothes anymore, so. You know, I'm walking around here, Cassie, I'm very embarrassed because I see all these stickers saying, stop khakis, know, the orange uh, windbreaker it kind of fits in here. Maybe a more pattern needs to be yeah. added to it, right? Exactly. You need a little bit more pattern. And what about yeah. the, the pants, though? The, the pants need some work. The no we got a, oh, no. We got a big oh, uh, no. No khaki zone here. I'm a marked man. No khakis. You got to leave. You got to leave. All right. I'm going uh, gentle on the loudmouth stuff. Here it is, the hat. I don't know about the rest of the outfit, but we have, I know, a lot more coming up from the merchandise show right after this on Inside Golf. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. If you haven't seen it already, I'd like to introduce you to Jersey Man Magazine, published by former Eagle tight end Ken Dunnick. It's the only men's magazine in our area. Enjoy articles on cigars, martinis, the mob, business, politics, and, of course, golf. Written by big-time journalists like George Anastasia, Bill Lyon, Sam Carcitti, and many others. Subscriptions are only $20 a year and are available at jerseybandmagazine.com. Bob Doria from Makefield Highlands Golf Club, enjoying the uh, 2015 PGA Show. Now back to more Inside Golf. Well, welcome back to the Merchandise Show here in Orlando. You know, this is an opportunity for companies to unveil a lot of their new product line. Chris McGinley is a marketing man with Titleist, and specifically, you're pretty proud about the new 915 driver, huh? We are. We're proud about the whole 915 metals line. This is the driver. There's two models, D2 and D3, and they have some really interesting technology that's all driven at longer distance. So we've got the active recoil channel, in the bottom of the club. And what does that do actually, Chris? The active recoil channel generates higher speed and lower spin. And that's usually two pretty good things if you want to hit the ball further. Right. So active recoil channel, radial speed face, which helps on off-center ball speed. So if you have a miss hit, yes. this will kind of correct it. You get higher speeds. Okay. A lot of people think forgiving drivers mean straight, but really forgiveness is all about ball speed. So if you miss the center of the face, you still get good distance. And then they're high MOI, which adds to that forgiveness. You don't want to put a bunch of technology in the product that generates speed and then lose it on an off-center hit. So having a high MOI driver helps retain that ball speed. Perfect. Okay. And you have the same thing with the 915 irons, huh? Can we take a look at those? We don't have 915 irons. It's just a metal wood line, but there's oh. driver, fairway, and hybrid available. Okay. Now, what are your people saying, the guys on tour that are using these things? What's the... Uh, What's the feedback, shall well, we say? That's a big part of our process. We went out uh, last summer to validate these on tour, and since that time, we've had great use, use out there. Most of our tour staff has converted to the new product. We've had a bunch of wins. Jimmy Walker just won in Hawaii. Jimmy Walker, huh? So he's got a full bag of 915 medals. And Thank you very much, Mr. Walker, huh? Absolutely. So it's been good. Yeah, Absolutely. very well accepted. And I saw you have a, a, an array of bags up there, tour guys, some local 
club pros as well, including a friend of the show back in Philadelphia at Applebrook. And that would be Dave McNabb. Great. Dave McNabb's right up there with the big names on, on tour. He's the Wall of Fame. Yeah, that's, you know what, He's it's all part of our pyramid of influence. So it's not just tour players, it's club professionals as well. You know, they play our product, they recommend our product, and we love guys like that. I'll tell you what, I bet nobody has come up to you and said, hey, Dave McNabb's up there today, huh? You're the first. <laughs> you are the first. Thanks. We're happy to have him up there. Thanks for your help. Yeah, you bet. My name is Kate. I am with K Bell Socks. We've been in business uh, since 1979. We have a wide range of socks, but we have a niche market in the golf and tennis industry, which we have brought to the show this year. Uh, we've been doing the show for about 20 years, and it's always been very successful. Uh, traditionally, socks have been Argyle and Basics, but they've evolved, which is great. So we specialize in the fun, novelty, sassy side and for men and women. So we have a, a very large variety of colorful, fun rhinestone socks, which women and the younger generation uh, seems to love and you know match with the, the fun colors of their wardrobes now. And what's great is the younger millennial male has started to get into the sport, which is awesome, and with them, the crazier, more obnoxious socks, the better. Uh, you can get them from us directly at shopkbellsocks.com. We are worldwide in all, almost all boutique stores and um, golf shops around the world and around the country. You know, in any walk of life, there's things we take for granted. The game of golf, it's certainly the case sometimes. You're on a golf course, for instance, and you see a tee marker or a yardage marker, and, you know, you use it for what it's there for, but you never think about, wait a minute, where did this come from? It may have come from National Golf Graphics, and the man there is Peter Meyer. How did I describe that? Was that pretty good? Perfect. Peter, tell us about what you provide to country clubs and golf courses around the country. I specifically provide uh, items that go on a golf course amenity-wise. That would be tee signs or hole signs, as some people call them, with the uh, logo, hole number, par, yardages, perhaps the actual hole graphic on them. Um, yardage markers, in-ground yardage markers for tees, fairways, tee markers um, for each set of tees where people tee off from. Uh, in-ground sprinkler head yardage caps that are measured to the center of the greens. Um, custom flags, embroidered, screen printed. And Is this a business that has grown? Have you thought or have people suggested to you, hey, can you do this for me? Like, uh, is it a, a, an evolutionary type of thing? It's a little bit of an evolutionary type thing, but if you think about some of the products and materials I sell, like cast bronze and cast aluminum, which is a, a large part of my business, that product has been around for centuries. Right. You know, cast people have been pouring metals for that long. So. There's things that you can do with metal that would become very custom for a golf course, like you know, casting something in the actual shape of their logo, uh, three-dimensional type uh, pieces, but most people just go with kind of the same standard type, simple, elegant looking products when it comes to that. Um, We're looking here at uh, from Autumn Trail Country Club and also from uh, my eyes brackets, brackets crossing. crossing. Okay. Yes. Two different styles, and when you deal with a potential client or a client, they tell you what they want, or do you kind of like recommend, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do this? Uh, usually it starts off with, I am interested in new tea signs, or uh, we are going to be buying new tea signs, and we're not sure what we want. So the process goes for me, usually I just ask a lot of questions as to, you know, what information are you going to put on the sign? That's that's an important thing because if somebody wants a whole graphic on a sign, then I'm probably going to steer them more into a different material, something that's more economical from the standpoint of uh, material choice. If somebody wants something simpler like this, or even as simple as having no yardages on it, then uh, it, it enables them to afford different materials. So 
In the case of these two signs, one is cast aluminum, one is granite. They're both mounted differently. So the process ends up going where I would end up getting what they want on the signs, give them different pricing, different materials and different sizes so they can look at it from a budget standpoint and kind of narrow it down to, okay, this is what we're kind of looking for and then start doing renderings for them. And we've all been in courses where, for want of a better term, minimalistic is better. You know, size isn't always the most important thing. Or the uh, availability of even yardage markers. Correct. Some clubs pr uh, really prefer not to have that. That's true. Some clubs think if you don't know where you're going, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> or have somebody like a caddy, <laughs> or a caddy measure, step it off. Yeah. yeah, there are some clubs. I don't, I don't work with that many clubs because they're not like that because they're not buying these sorts of products. So um, they do a lot of that stuff in-house. So I, I work a lot with private clubs, uh, semi-private clubs, upscale publics, mom and pops, runs the gamut. So I'm going to take a walk right to, well, 20 feet away, uh, something that attracted me to you, and that's that huge clock down there. You can sure. talk about that. That is, uh, I would say, very iconoclastic, and it is the type of thing that I think that uh, would fit in almost any golf course. Yeah, this particular product I sell for a, another company who um, takes all the parts, welds them all together, it's all cast aluminum, everything is made in the United States, including the clock mechanism itself, which is very rare these days. And uh, he puts it all together, powder coats it in-house, and it can be done in literally hundreds of different options as far as the top, the face, the posts, the bases, uh, in different combinations and colors and, and whatever works best for a golf course. You can put a logo on it. Right. Well, listen, Peter, thanks very much yeah. for giving us an idea. Like I said before, we take so many things for granted in life. This may be what you do, uh, an example of that. But now we know a lot more about where it all comes from and what National Golf Graphics can do for maybe a country club in Philadelphia. Yeah, definitely. That'd be great. Thanks, Thank Peter. You. Thanks. This is Patrick Cherry, General Manager of PGA Magazine based in Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania, coming to you from the 2015 PGA Merchandise Show. And stay tuned for more with Inside Golf. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNplus.com, the professional golfers network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to PGNplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on PGNplus.com. Book your tee time today. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin. And go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. And welcome back to Teed Off here on Inside Golf. Today we are back on the gaming floor at the Valley Forge Casino Resort, the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort. And we have, uh, well, I guess you could say it's a beautiful panel. We have Mike Kern from the <laughs> Philadelphia Daily News. Okay. Okay, it's a stretch, but I was looking for a segue. <laughs> we have Jack McCaffrey, who's back with us from the Delaware County Times. And we also have Joe Logan from My Philly Golf. It's a panel. Com. <laughs> it's just no adjectives needed, right? No adjectives needed. Recently, it was announced, and I think, in fact, uh, I don't know if you were part of the exclusive that Mike Kern had in the Philadelphia Daily News a few weeks back, talking about how uh, the Philadelphia Cricket Club's Wissahickon course, which underwent last year a major renovation, is going to be uh, hosting what uh, is called the, well, the USGA has a new event. It's actually going to be played this year. It's going to be 2020, though, at the Wissa Hicken course, and it is called? Uh, U.S. Amateur Four Ball. It's four basically ball. Uh, uh, 128 two-man teams. Uh, there'll be 64 women, a different event. They're starting at the same time. 
and it's just like you play match play on a weekend. It's the thing you, we always lose at the Ryder Cup. Right. Okay. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, but these we, are we amateurs. Play, right. This is a whole different tournament. Uh, and, and the USGA is just, this is the first time they're going to have it this year. It's not yes. going to be in Philly until 2015 right. so be... at the Wissahickon course. Now, the Wissahickon course also uh, this year right. is going to be hosting what used to be called the Club Pro Championship. Right. I think it's now the called the PNC. The professional National Championship. I don't know. Yeah. And it does open up, though, a lot of opportunities for guys who finish, what, in the top 20? Top 20 go to the PGA. To go to the PGA Championship. So it's a pretty big event for guys who uh, are looking to take it to the next level. And a lot of people seem to think it may be an audition, Mike, for a possible major coming to the Wissa Hicken course. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're talking long time down the road, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that anybody who's seen the Wissa Hicken course since it's underwent, it's a little bit like looking at Oakmont, you, like they took all the trees out and it's really, it was a great course to begin with, it's even better. So yeah, and then when 2020 they come here for the four ball, if it goes over well, but, you know, you got a little problem with getting a U.S. Open, and that's called Marion, which will be in the rotation at some point in the mid-20s or late-20s or whatever. Well, the USGA probably is not going to bring two Opens to Philadelphia. So then you're maybe looking at a PGA, but Aronimi, you know, also wants a PGA. So you might get something, you know, maybe you get a U.S. Amateur. Maybe you get, um, uh, I mean, I know people have talked about a Ryder Cup, but that seems to come in a package now, you know, you get Ryder Cups. But, yeah, I think if it goes well this year and in 220, Something more will be coming. Now, what that is, I well, have no idea. Our, our ace researcher, Jack Conley, who is no stranger to Inside Golf, provided me with a list of future sites for the PGA and for the U.S. Open. For the PGA, everything is booked until 2020. Okay. Now, that would be the year that they would hold that event at, at the West Hickory. But by so the that's, time, by that the time would be out. 2020 comes around, they'll be booked to like. 224. Right. right. So it would be sometime probably after 2022 or 2023. And the open sites, like Mike mentioned, open, the open, which is run by the USGA, probably is setting its sights on maybe a 100th anniversary of Bobby Jones and the Grand Slam, which would take it Jack to what, 2030. I actually think it'll come before that. But really? Yeah, I do. Like a lot of people think 2030 at Marion would be the US Amateur. Yes. Because that is, of course, what Bobby Jones won. Yeah to finish the Grand Slam. Well, Jack, I hope both of us are around to cover we'll be whenever there. it comes. Right? We'll be there. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. The, Just hope the, you're around. Murray in two years ago really showcased itself. For they won, and they did exactly what they, 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 the golf course held up. It held up against the greatest players in the world. They were able to pull this event off when people didn't think they were going to be able to pull it off. It just, again, I don't I don't know how the cricket club would be able to ace out uh, Marion for any kind of major like One that. One thing I think that the Philadelphia Cricket Club in Flowertown has going for it is its size. It, it has, in addition to the Wissa Hicken course, a course that opened 10 years ago, uh, Militia, Hill, Militia Hill, where part of this event in 2020, I think the qualifying rounds yes. are going to be held there. You need two courses. Two days. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think, I think a US, in general, acreage-wise. A U.S. amateur, I think, might be the perfect event. And let's say Marion's getting an open, I'll just throw a year out, 224, which is when Bobby Jones won his first. Uh, he won at Marion, I think he's a U.S. amateur then, or I'm, I'm getting my dates confused. But let's say you had a U.S. open coming to Marion and an amateur coming to the cricket club like in you know a year apart or two years apart. But once again, I think Aronimink still would like to get involved with, and I think they're looking more to PGA Championship. So in that decade there, we could have a lot of things going on in the Philadelphia area. And, and I think it's for, uh, I don't want to say not a tug of war, but the USGA and the PGA generally don't use the same venues. One exception, Beth Page Black, which has hope and, uh, hosted rather, uh, a USGA well, major. Well, Baltus also, hosted both. It, yeah. It, but typically, most courses right. are either a PGA course right. or a, a USGA course. Right. Marion has always been a USGA course. So down the line, U.S. Hamner, you think better shot at uh, Wissahick? I just think if, if you're going to say that the U.S. Open's going to go to Marion and they're not going to bring two U.S. Opens to Philadelphia, I think maybe an amateur, yeah. Just not enough access there at the cricket club for a U.S. Open. I can't see it. There's just two lane streets going into that. I don't know how you could possibly pull that Where there's off. a will, there's a way. Well, look how they got into Marion. Marion. For her they shut down Ardmore Avenue. Yeah, right. They had people on buses from 10 miles away. And also something the cricket club has is the Militia Hill course is literally adjacent. So you could have, uh, you, first of all, if you're going to have a U.S. Amateur, you need two courses. They've got that. And you need acreage for all the 
tents and corporate hospitality. They've got that on the other course. And you know what else they have nearby? Sunnybrook Golf Club, which has the longest entrance, I think, in the world from, <laughs> from the street, Stanton Avenue, to the club. They can park 10,000 cars well, along that driveway. Hope when this stuff is happening, we're still around to talk about it. <laughs> Let, let's hope that, okay? I hope we're back next week to talk about it. That's <laughs> it for Inside Golf and Teed Off. Mike Kern, Jack McCaffrey, and Joe Logan. Thanks also to the folks here at the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort. More of Inside Golf coming up in a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, and it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, and there are nearly 500 guest rooms, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin. And go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Hi, it's Mike Atara with Spirit Golf Management. We're here at the PGA Merchandise Show and Inside Golf. Welcome back. Hi, welcome to Mini Zoo Golf Bag Covers. My name is Alex Roberts, inventor founder of the Mini Zoo Golf Bag Cover. Ken, here we have my buddy, the Dalmatian. What I've invented is a machine washable costume going over your entire stand bag. So your favorite animal as your entire stand bag. Access your clubs, balls, and tees with ease. We aim to please here at Mini Zoo Golf Bag Covers. What you see here is a regular stand bag. This would be your stand bag. Now I'm gonna place my costume over top of it and create life. Now here we have a Dalmatian, cat, dog, monkey, or bear, Mini Zoo Golf Bag Covers, we care. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf for the Merchandise Show in Orlando. You know, Inside Golf's been coming here for several years, and every year we come back, the show gets bigger, and there are more important things to see and do, and people from literally all around the world, they come to Central Florida in January. So stay with us, because next week we're going to be back right here at the PJ Merchandise Show. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. Try to make it to Orlando next year for the PGA Merchandise Show, right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by PGN Plus. Play your golf bucket list. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life, and Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street and by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.